<laughs> I'm located in, in Amityville, Long Island. So we're really not that far away from each other. No, no, ma'am. I grew up just a wee oh. bit of time. I have fake memories of it, but uh, I lived in Center Reach. My dad was there for a little while. Oh, oh, so you're familiar with, with where I am? To a degree. I mean, it's a long time. In the early 60s there. And then we have a little line shirt in 64. And then, um, and then we've, they've been here ever since. Oh, I see. Yes. Well, I grew up um, in Massapequa. Um, oh. So I'm, I've grown, I've been on Long Island my whole life. And I just actually moved one town over to Amityville, so uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, I've always yeah. been here on Long Island. Mm -hmm. But I just wanted to um, mm -hmm. say good morning to you and thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for doing this interview uh, with Living the Gourmet. Well, I'm not more than happy. I'm myself. Thank you. So uh, I just want to congratulate you on your book, Dining at the White House. And I actually read it twice. So, uh, oh, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I really enjoyed it. it it's a very, um, you know, I, it moved along well, and, and the recipes are very, very, um, how can I put it? They're not complicated, you know, where you can, you can, <coughs> them and you know, I'm oh, sorry for that. And you know that you'll be able to find these things in the supermarket or, you know, your local store. But I enjoyed it very, very much. Yeah, I, 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 I mean, there's many menus to choose from, and I wanted to find something that really people like say, "Oh my God, there's 1,500 <laughs> ingredients that'll be traveling all over the, the state of New York or wherever trying to find it." I didn't want to make it that way. I wanted to make it understandable and try and make it as easy as possible to uh, to, to, to 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 do it. You know, so I said that'd be great. You know. Well, you did that, and I I in, I enjoyed it. And I'm going to be putting on my blog, cooking with Chef John, cooking at, cooking at the dining at the White House, that, uh, where my readers can go and they will follow along with the um, recipes as I as I prepare them. So that will be a feature from here on. <laughs> now I would like to give a little bit of your background, of, of for my readers, your career. It started basically with The Great Chefs of France, mm -hmm. that a book that your dad gave you, mm -hmm. and you earned a culinary degree from Johnson and Wales University, and you graduated cum laude, 1981. Mm -hmm. And from there, would you like to tell a little bit about your two and a half year cooking adventure in France, and how that prepared you and set you apart from other French chefs to work at the White House? I graduated in 81. I was in the New England area, Boston, Providence, working for a couple of years. And then in 84 uh, is when my a friend of mine that was working over in Europe cooking too. Yes. He me to come over and visit him. So uh, when I went over there, I mean, I knew something was over there to check out and it was probably going to be very helpful. And you know, obviously having a love for cooking since a younger age, I, I just felt like that was the uh, that was the mecca. <laughs> That's where we had to draw ourselves to, you know? Yes. And a uh, little I know it was... Um, it, it was a fantastic experience. Nothing was really preset. No. Hey, you were definitely going to work here. You're going to spend some time here. It wasn't pre-organized at all. It was just on the fly, basically. Exactly. And, um, and it turned out to be just a wonderful experience. You know, two and a half years of uh, living with the folks, uh, getting to know the French people, knowing their their way of life in the areas that I was in, and then of course working in uh, hotels and restaurants and seeing that end of it and uh, being exposed to that. It was huge. I mean, I'm so glad that I didn't go to France to stay there when I was there the first time. The first that, time. That trip to France at the my graduation day from culinary school. Exactly. I wasn't ready for it. No. Plus we... years that you kind of settle in a little bit, get into the business a little bit, and I was my mind was a little bit more open to what was going on. And uh, if you show them that you have some knowledge. They're more than happy to show you more, but if you're just like completely green, I think it might have been. I think it might have been a little tougher for me. So hey, all in all, it worked out great. Uh, after that two and a half years, um, returned back to the states. Obviously, I was down in the Virgin Islands for uh, approximately a year there, and then when I returned from there to uh, towards Lancaster, landed in D.C. It, it was the French experience that got me into my first job in uh, in Washington, and then working with a French Belgian chef. Yes. He, he knew that uh, one or two places I was at in Europe wanted to bring me on uh, straight away. After working with him for a couple of weeks, then that's when I met all those French chefs in Washington. And, uh, in uh, 87 it was. 
Exactly. And we, um, we kind of hit it off with a couple of uh, the French chefs there, became friends, and, and one of those gentlemen, uh, mm -hmm. Pierre Chambrin, yes. uh, a couple years later would be a sous chef at the White House. Yes. And so after, uh, after him working there for a year or two, obviously it was my French experience is what got me into the White House, because he point blank said to me that, you know, we, we, I'm French born, but yet being American citizen work full time at the White House, the pastry chef is French born, right. but of course American citizen. He says, I can bring another Frenchman that's, a, that's an American citizen, but I think it's too many French people. You know, if I can find an American that do something about French cooking, that's what I'm looking for. So little did I know, that's what set me apart from the other candidates. That exactly. Point time was, was that work experience in France. Right, you were an American who could cook French. Mm -hmm. And that's what set you apart. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Chef John. You um, really uh, went through the uh, the steps that I had laid out here for you very well. Now, you are the longest tenured White House chef, spanning three administrations, George H.W. Bush, Bill Clinton, and George Bush. Uh, well, what are the longer ones? I mean, there was, there's some other chefs that have been there for a while. There's a couple of chefs that left after a couple of years there, you know. But I, I'd have to say one, not the longest, but one of the longer, one, longer tenure chefs there. Right. And uh, cooking for heads of state, uh, Tony Blair, Putin, Mandela, movie stars, you say, Sophia Loren, mm -hmm. and Julia Child, who uh, gave you a thank you note for how delicious your food was. Mm -hmm. And do you think back that, and it does it give you pause to know that you were part of history, and history was being made over the food that you prepared for these people? It was. It was a humbling experience in that respect, you know, that you were watching history unfold. Exactly. And you were one of the reasons why it was being unfold, you know, I mean, you, all, we've, you know, all the talks and business goes on during the daytime, but when they have a state dinner at nighttime, that's when they have a chance to socialize and get to know each other, you know, they're, they're not talking politics around the dinner table. No. They're getting to know each other. They, they did all that, that all that uh, negotiating stuff goes on during the daytime, you know. And, well, and food's a huge important factor in everybody's lives. It, if it's uh, the family come together for dinner at night. Exactly. Uh, every evening or or if it's a head of state getting together with uh, our president and um exactly and just get to know each other and it's true that food keeps a family together it keeps it really does mm -hmm. food it gives you the mem is a foundation also for your memories i i believe you know it, when you smell something delicious cooking and it just draws you back to your childhood i think food is a, a great a great way to bring people together. Absolutely. Uh, I had a wedding on Saturday night. It's probably the biggest wedding I've done in quite a while. They want a huge cocktail hour with raw bars, uh, any pasta stations, uh, all types of past foods. I mean, it was loaded. I mean, it was the most amount of food ever served. And then we had filet and sea bass and some other goodies. I ended up with some uh, uh, macaroons I made fresh for it. And you, you, you wor we looked, worked like a dog for four days making this thing happen. But in the end, the, the bride came up to me on Saturday night and said, she gave me a big hug and said, Aww. I knew it was going to be good, but I didn't think it was going to be this good. And mm. uh, you far surpassed our expectations, and this is the happiest day of my life. You know? mm. So there you have it, you know. And, and you have... If, if it's the President of the United States or, or some bride just getting married on a weekend somewhere in the world, it's, it is still the food that's important, you know. It is the food that's important. And you speak about Christmas at the White House, of mm. cooking for some 20,000 people mm. and being entertained all through the se season and thousands of biscuits and... 20 gallon barrels of eggnog. Um, would you like to tell a little bit about Christmas at the White House? Christmas is, uh, is definitely the busiest time of the year there. I mean, it's all, you know, the, uh, the, all, all these different agencies come in and, and obviously political groups or whatever, you know, they all come in and most of the time it's, it's heavy hors d'oeuvre receptions. Right. We're putting people through usually about five or six hundred people at a time and sometimes two times a day we're, we're doing that, you know. So for, uh, for us from, uh, from the Thanksgiving through uh, the couple days before Christmas, you you are part of the White House. You you're pretty much living there morning, noon, and night. You know? uh -huh. So it's uh, I always look back at it, and even when it was happening, that you know you you just have to mentally get yourself prepared for it. In the first couple of days, you you kind of get yourself adjusted to it and just pump it out as much as you can there, and then you just kind of hit cruise control for a while. And uh -huh. then before you know, it's it's over. You know. Yeah. Those three weeks or so go by, and uh, you made a lot of people happy, and uh, you move on. You know, but it's just it's kind of exciting that. Uh, that uh, all these people coming through and uh, enjoying your food and uh, the company of the president. And you, uh, you, you mentioned that 
the guests at the White House always seem to ask to, to visit the kitchen. It, Some, sometimes, yep. Yeah. I mean, when we have, uh, what, what, what would happen a lot of times if, uh, if VIPs are in there, if they'd be a, you know, uh, an athlete or movie star or a politician or something, right. and uh, they would get a private tour through the Secret Service guys, and mm -hmm. uh, they would uh, take them around at a separate time when maybe the regular crowds are not there. And I know a couple of my guys that I knew in the Secret Service side, they said, hey, John, anytime somebody's good, I'll <laughs> bring them by the kitchen, and everybody wants to see the kitchen anyway. I mean, right. On their little private tour, say, hey, can we see the kitchen, you know? Can like I said, you'll be there slice and dice and look up, and uh, there's uh, Anthony Hopkins there uh, looking down at you saying, right. oh, what's that piece of equipment over there? You right, know? and Paul Newman, you have Paul Newman fixing his, uh, his goodies for a movie at the White House. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, he, had, uh, he, he sent ahead a bunch of snacks, you know, from pretzels and uh, popcorn and all those kind of goodies. And, but he said, don't make the popcorn until I get there. Right. <laughs> and so, there it was, uh, so I was there waiting, had everything ready to go. So he, just, he said, just have, the, have some melted butter, uh, some sea salt, and, uh, and hot air popper. So when he got there, we poured it in there and let it go. And his, his little technique that he wanted was uh, after it completely empties out of the hopper, and the hot air is blowing from the hot air popper. Keep tossing the bowl under the hot air and let it. He said, make it, "This will make it crispy. This will crisp it up." And then we'll moisten it. We, he, he took a, a bowl with the, with the butter in it, and then he took a knife and just like splashing it. He poured it gently, but then splash it across the popcorn, then toss, 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 and uh, then a little bit of sea salt, and uh, you're good to go. Right. And you mentioned that the kitchen is not really all that large, considering it's no, the I White House. Mm-hmm. It is. Uh, it was big at one time. They got ch chopped up and broken up for other offices and what have you. But uh, it's not that huge of a kitchen. It's mm -hmm. a great size kitchen when you're working by yourself. And a lot of times I am working by myself. You know, we, I don't have like five people <laughs> under me getting ready for dinner for two people. Uh, right. when, you're, when you're cooking for the family, you're, you're pretty much on your own. Right. Right. The kitchen's good for that size. But when we flip over to the busy time, it gets pretty tight. Everybody's uh, everybody's trying to carve out their little <laughs> little acreage there, <laughs> and uh, so they can work. You know. And you don't really keep it all that stocked. I no, found that no, interesting. We, we need, use it and move on. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. we don't keep like, uh, hey, we're just going to keep chicken and tenderloins laying in the fridge just waiting for us to. We, we make the menu. Um, when we need it, we, we purchase it, get it in, and uh, execute it, and it's done. Exactly. It's like a banquet house. Exactly. And um, you were working the kitchen on 9-11, on you mentioned, for a 2,000-person congressional picnic mm -hmm. and you spoke of how that day changed the White House forever mm -hmm. a and um, how did this impact the, the uh, kitchen at the White House? Uh, well, first of all, I mean, we, we had to cut down everything that we're doing and just stop the production because we were in full production mode that morning right. and then, then we got the word and said no party, we had to start moving everything into the fridges uh, with no idea of what was going to be happening 15 minutes later. Exactly. And of course, after the Pentagon got hit, we were evacuated, and um, the next morning came in. We had we had we had refrigerators full of food. Right. And we just, they decided to uh, give it away to the the two forts, McNair and Fort uh, Myers, close by. Uh, but once we came back and kind of settled into our new little routine, there was no parties. I mean, our our social calendar was pretty much wiped out. Um, we uh, we would only entertain heads of state. They come mm -hmm. in on no state dinners. Though. I mean, they come in on these what we call working lunches and working dinners, which happened often anyway. But there was two or three heads of state coming in every week for a while there, and uh, just having usually lunches, sometimes dinner. And I remember we did one dinner up at uh, Camp David with Tony Blair. Right. What's uh, what's going to happen during that during that time there? You know. And you mentioned how it was Christmas time that started to get the schedule back moving. Yeah. And after when Christmas came, then you know the first lady pretty much said, "You know, it's been a horrible experience, and we we we're we're um, you know we're we're just we're all devastated." But uh, we feel Christmas time is the best way for us to kind of get our social calendar back in gear, and uh, and it did. I mean, it, it that got us you know getting back to what we normally do, but it was never really the same, hundred percent. You know. Oh no, no. And then um, you served as acting head chef in George Bush second term. And um, and then looking back, you resigned in uh, 1105. Mm -hmm. And looking back, you must have many fond memories and be very proud of the food that you served and the events that you planned. Mm -hmm. And would you like to share a particular, any anything that stood out? God, there are so many. I mean, obviously, 
the Julie Child thing was like uh, was the creme la creme of things. Happening. Oh, I would imagine. Just having her pop up. Uh, I mean, when when we got the word that she was coming into the, into for dinner, and it was I mean for lunch, I'd say that day it was coming in for lunch. It was literally 15 minutes before service, and it's like, ah, you know, we, yeah, we're not gonna change anything at this point here. Just go with it, you know. But it, it was just one of those days where the moons and the stars all lined up great. Everything was executed perfectly. Got the food out there, and then all of a sudden this this uh, this figure shows up in your kitchen. Uh, after uh, after the meal, and there it is. There's there's Julie Child saying, oh, "I'd just like to thank you all for uh, for a great meal, you know." And uh, we chatted for a moment, and then one of my uh, one of the employees there happened to have a camera, and she took a shot of it, and it was uh, it was perfect timing, you know. Uh, the co- and like I mentioned, the social secretary enjoyed the plate, so she, she dropped it on a table in the red room. That's that picture of the entree. Right. And um, and it, it worked out great, you know. And um, do you see any other cookbooks on the horizon? I don't know. We're uh, once we kind of digest this, we talked about a couple of different ideals here, you know. But um, yeah, the, the menus were well received, and I have many of them. Yes, you do. At, uh, pie, uh, well, I'll, get, I'll say, say this: my first concept of the book I thought about was was just going to be called Menus of the White House. Uh huh. And capitalizing on all those menu cards that I have, I was pretty vigilant on hold on, on collecting them. Uh-huh. And so then afterwards, they. Um, they, uh, they, they, uh, they, they ran well, you know, and so we thought maybe, uh, maybe, uh, maybe the next one might be called Menus of the White House. Well, we'll, we'll have to see here, you know. I think that would be nice because you, you speak about pairing your meals and putting them together. So if you have a menu, that might be great. You could always scale it down for a home dinner, but at least it shows putting all your different ideas together and how to form a great meal. I would, I would like that. That sounds good. I would like well, that. Keep in mind, there, you know, I'll have you be one of the first ones to review it. Then, how about that? Oh, I would love that. And Chef John, I want to thank you so much. This has been a thrill for me. It really has been. And oh, thank you. I would like, and as I say, I'm going to make the page of um, cooking with Chef John, mm-hmm. and. You know, I would like to give you an invitation since you you're really not that far. Mm-hmm. If you ever wanted, I would I would be delighted to serve you and your family. Oh, thank you very much. Who knows? We're we're thinking about maybe a trip up to New England, maybe towards Boston this uh, this summer. Oh, well, we're not that. Maybe go see some friends up there. So who knows? Maybe a, a side trip over to Long Island might might be in choice. You know. Oh, that would. I'm telling you, that would be that would just be so so much fun. So much fun for myself, my son, and my daughter. Fantastic, you know. And, uh, and I can make you your flourless chocolate tart. Ah, c'est bien. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to do that. I like it when people cook for this time of time. It does good. <laughs> oh. Fantastic, you know. All right. Well, uh, if you have any questions at all, you know how to get hold of me. I'd be more happy to uh, follow up with anything on that. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you for being so kind. I, it was a pleasure for me. Oh, thank you very much. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Chef John, and have a wonderful day. And, and thank you for all the wonderful meals you cooked at the White House for our presidents. Oh, thank you very much. You've been very kind. Thank you, Jim. Bye-bye okay. now. Cheers.